Warning, the Gel Blaster toy shown in this video could be mistaken for a real firearm. Do not take Gel Blasters into public spaces or it will likely be treated as real by authorities. Gel Blasters are classified as toys in Queensland regulations, however this may be different in your state or territory. Be sure to check your local laws before buying or ordering a Gel Blaster. Also, ensure you use adequate eye protection whenever using Gel Blasters. Stay safe everyone. So g'day, g'day boys and girls. Uh, welcome back into the Novice Shed. Now, uh, I'm gonna have a look at obviously another Gel Blaster review. Uh, comment below if you can figure out what it is before I mention it. Just don't look here, it's fine. <laughs> uh, couple of quick things though, as usual, before we jump in. Uh, comment on one of the, on the 500 subscriber video I did. Again, thank you for that. Uh, mentioned about whether or not my videos get demonetized because a lot of people who pay attention to a lot of YouTube might be aware of some of the things going on in that space or that has been going on for the past couple of years with all the crap and media attention and whatnot. Now, YouTube made a rule about a year or so ago where you can't actually run an AdSense account, which is their advertising accounts, unless you had a thousand subscribers or more. Uh, that was because a lot of people were doing it with less than that and I believe it was cost and effort required to calculate and run all that stuff behind the scenes wasn't worthwhile. Whatever the reasons, I don't care. Before that, I did have an AdSense account, and I'm sure that if I was to hit a thousand subscribers, which let's, that would be a really cool thing. No, no pressure, hint, hint, wink, wink, wink nudge, nudge. Um, if I was to hit it again, I could probably do it. However, well before that rule came in, when I was still doing drift videos and whatnot more consistently, consistently, maybe one a month, maybe, I decided, and I actually made a post on the Facebook page that I was never going to stop running ads and I was never gonna do it again. For a couple of reasons, one of the uh, obvious ones are, it's really not worth it, like the money that you get, you need to have a ridiculous amount of views and whatnot to actually get anything of value out of it. So I'm not expecting to ever get that popular. And I mean, no one can expect that if it happens, great, but I definitely am not guaranteeing or hoping that it happens and planning my life around that because that's just being silly. I still have a full-time job and I fully intend to continue with a full-time job for the foreseeable future. This is not gonna be uh, replaced with YouTube, at least not anytime soon. Uh, however, another reason, which is more of a personal reason, is that when I watch YouTube, because I watch it quite a bit, ads annoy the hell out of me. I really hate having to deal with them. And I don't use an ad blocker because some of the people I watch, I want them to get the money from it, but they still annoy me. So personally, never gonna run ads. Doesn't matter how things go, not gonna do it. Now, I'm not saying I won't do stuff with companies, shops, retailers, whatever in the future, because depending on the scenario, I may do that, but I won't be running ads on the YouTube channel. So you don't ever have to worry about that. I don't believe these videos would be getting demonetized, except for certain things coming up, or if I mention certain words, because the algorithm hunts for certain shapes and words being used. You can run a gun channel, an actual gun channel, not a toy channel, and it won't be demonetized. So I don't believe that's a thing. I think it was. Boydie who commented on that. It was only recently from when I recorded this video anyway. So yeah, last thing I am hoping to, if I pull my finger out since I've got a few days off work, to get this video done and up by the new year. So assuming that I'm not crap, lazy and useless, and I actually managed to upload this video before the 1st of January, 2019, happy new year. Welcome to 2019 and yeah, it should be a good year. Let's hope that things move on and upwards. We've had a lot of interesting developments over the year since gel blasting became very popular in Australia early, uh, early to mid year and since then it's been nothing but upwards uh, with only a few minor setbacks which haven't really been setbacks it's just been more points where people are trying to you know make things look worse than they really are because toys but anyway it's it's been a good year so hopefully we'll keep going with things hope you guys have a good new year and I hope you guys make plenty of new year, new me, uh, new year, new me promises and continue to break all of them before the end of January because that's just what Australians do. And let's get on with it. We'll jump into the review. So as you can definitely not tell because I've had it sitting in front of me this entire time in the frame of the camera, I have the version three of the M249 saw, otherwise known as the FN Mini Mine.
the M249 saw. Now, the M249 is a designation that was given to the real world uh, weapon in the US military. Its actual name slash designation is, I believe it's FN Herschel Minimar. It's a developed by a European company. So it is quite a unique design. There are a few things around it which look quite good. It's one of the, the big things about it compared to a lot of other sort of uh, saw style weapons is that it's quite compact. So it's a bit lighter, it's a bit easier to deal with, that sort of thing. There are a bunch of variants of it and there are a few things there which I'm hoping when I get my own, I have my own on the way, I'm hoping to modify the look of it a bit to make it look like one of those designs. Uh, but moving further along, in the Gel Blaster scene, obviously M249 is quite a popular name. Everyone who plays any video game ever has heard of it. And so that's what it is. Now this is actually version 3. There was a uh, version 1 originally, which wasn't very good. <laughs> it was okay, but it wasn't very good, uh, which had like the battery and the box magazine, those sort of things. The version 2, I believe, had a horizontal Gen 8 style hybrid gearbox. Uh, friend of mine, Lieutenant Dan, the one who suggested that I get shot by everyone. Yeah, that guy. He got one, he pulled it apart, modified it, and fit a full-on Gen 8 gearbox into it, and that's what he's been running. So any of the videos you might have seen where you hear that or see that running around, that's what that was. So obviously, this one, having a Gen 8 style gearbox in it, has been quite exciting for a few of us. But moving aside, we'll get onto that later on. So first things first, we'll jump into section one, and we'll have a look at the close-up style of the blaster. Now. One thing I'm gonna mention straight away is the weight. This thing doesn't weigh much, so it's quite easy to throw around and handle. It does have a bit of a plasticky feel, but it's not too bad. Sorry, my phone just went off. I should put that on silent. Uh, however, one thing that you will note about it, like the MP7 and whatnot, this is not nylon. So it's pretty much all a plastic body. It doesn't feel as solid, and that's purely because it's such a large, beefy boy. So it's gonna be necessarily uh, there's going to be necessarily large cavities inside the actual moldings, which is unfortunate. Not only that, but if I get it up a bit closer to the camera, sort of see there. Oh, that'll help. Sorry about that, I forgot to turn my light on. So yeah, if I try and get it up a bit closer to the camera, you kind of, it's not too easy to see, but a lot of the mold lines are showing quite significantly. It's not too big a deal, but just there to be aware of. So moving further along, on the business end of the blaster, you do get a small outer barrel extension, I believe it's silver, uh, with a flash hider molded into it that goes on the end here. Uh, this is Lieutenant Dan's blaster, so he's already pulled that off for a few reasons. So that does come with it standard. Now you do get with it a plastic barrel that you can see just there. It's a bit hard to see in the light in this room, but it is a plastic barrel standard, so just be aware of that. Further along, you do have this front iron sight here with a little mold style there, and it does line up with the iron sight just here at the back. I'll try and show you that a bit later on as we go along. At the front here, the actual handguard that goes around the barrels is feels fairly solid, has a couple of holes in it, which uh, would be for ventilating heat. Again, gel blaster, utterly pointless, but that's there if you want it. You do have this section just here at the front where these little holes are, that's for the bipod. So I believe that this did come with a bipod standard. I just don't have it because again, it got pulled off. We don't tend to use them too much in our games, but that should uh, connect straight in there. You do have a tiny little Picatinny rail, maybe one and a bit inches, just there on the front. I'll try and set that so you can see it. Yep, just there, which is nice because that way if you wanted to attach a laser or a torch or something, at least it's there. And if you go further along the back of the handguard, just here, I'm gonna take that out because that's getting in the way. Go further along the back of the handguard, as you can see, I'll go like that, just there where this uh, nice little foregrip is. Set that off. You do have a continuation on that Picatinny rail on the same plane as the front end, just there, and it's quite long. So you do get this foregrip with it. It's just a little screw on the bottom to tighten it on. Uh, it's fairly flimsy, it's very plastic. So it's not exactly what I would call great quality, but it's something, I suppose. And on the bottom sides of each side, so just there and just there, you do have uh, another rail on each side, the same length as that bottom section on the handguard. So a few options there for doing torches, that sort of thing. Not a bad idea, nice little uh, feature. Further along, you do have your little carry handle. Now, this is very flimsy, even though this thing doesn't weigh much, and I'd say maybe a kilo and a bit, 
it's already bending this stalk. So I would not be relying on this. I know that uh, Lieutenant Dan came up with a thing a while ago where he got an old carry hand, M4 style carry handle for wells. He put it on there and he uses that as his uh, carry handle. So yeah, personally I don't like the look of it, but that's a personal choice and it is quite useful. I'm not gonna deny that. Further along the actual receiver, you do have a lot of nice little moldings in, such as the uh, uh, molded in charging handle. Doesn't move, doesn't do anything. Little ejection ports, couple of little bits here and there, which is nice. Doesn't really do much though. Like I said, they're all just for show. Now one exception is just here, this tiny little, I'll try and see if I can get the light into it. Uh, not really, just there, oh, that'll work. That's a little switch. That's your mag release. So that's the only real moving part on this end. When you move further back, there is a switch just here. That's your on-off switch. So you got on-off and then mag release. They're the only real moving parts you have for the mechanism on the outside. Before we get to the stock though, we'll talk about the trigger and the hand and the pistol grip. So pistol grip, it is definitely very plasticky. It doesn't feel that solid, but it does have some nice uh, texturing, or I should say moldings into it where it's stripped like that. So it's, even if you're sweaty, you're not likely to drop it but it would still be good with gloves if you're gonna be running around. Trigger guard, massive. So even if you've got fat fingers and gloves, you're not gonna have a problem there. The trigger is plastic and I've had a look at a photo of the internals that Dan, when he got this, he pulled it apart and took photos for us all. It's basically just a really long trigger. So similar to your M4 Gen 8s, where you run that risk of snapping the trigger, it's probably gonna be an issue on these as well, purely because all they did was elongate the trigger. So be very careful on that. If you want to upgrade it because you know you're going to be a bit too forceful, then I would go for it. I'm sure that someone's going to come out with something for that. Wouldn't be too difficult. So there's a business opportunity for someone. Moving further along, you do have on the left-hand side, just here, this little silver bit. And on the right-hand side, just up here near the back of the buttstock, these are tiny little latches. Now, I've also been told that these come with a sling. I'd imagine it's probably not a very good sling, but what that does give us the benefit of is that if you wanted to get a nice sling or you have a nice sling, you could use those as your sling attachment points so it can just hang. It's a nice little bit. Or if you want, strap it around your shoulder and that way you could run two of them. Because why not? Last but not least, we'll move on to the buttstock. Now the buttstock is in a similar design to some of the others. I dare say that they've just used parts from other blasters to uh, make this one work. It's very much an M4 style stock. In fact, if you move the buttstock completely off, that's an M4 style buffer tube. I mean, it does mean modifying is gonna be simplified because you can grab any other stock that will fit this buffer tube and chuck them on. I don't know 100% which ones do or do not fit. In fact, let's do a test right now. So this is my Wells M4. This was actually a Christmas present from my girlfriend. I know, right, winning. So let's try and see if it will fit on the M249. I'm thinking not, but it would be cool if it did. It'd be really cool if it did. Ah, look at that. It doesn't go all fully in. There's no lock there for it, but it goes to there and that's full in. I'm gonna run like that today. That's way better. Sorry about that, I'm getting distracted. So I shall put that away. All right, so. So there's your M4 buffer tube. Now, like every other blaster with an M4 buffer tube, that's where your battery goes. Now your battery is your standard little black battery connection. It's nothing special there. And any batteries, if you're not sure if they're gonna fit or work, if it fits inside the M4 buffer tube, it'll probably work. So use that as a guide. Normally most batteries nowadays seem to be made so that they fit because it seems to be the generic style. Uh, so you should be all right there. The buttstock itself is very plastic. It's not very good. Like. It is adjustable, just lift that up and move it, which is nice. But the butt pad is hard plastic. It's not too bad on your shoulder, again, because you're not gonna be forcing it in, but I wouldn't be putting too much force on it anyway. So it's nice, but it's nothing special. Like, it's more or less an afterthought, I think. They just put it together and got it out there. Not a bad thing, because it does work, but I think they could have done better. That's just me. So we're finished with the close-up look of it. What we'll do now, we'll jump straight into section two and the basic operations of this blaster. So like I mentioned earlier, I'll go into a little bit more detail. 
One of the big things about this is that it has a Gen 8 gearbox in it. Now, it is not a exact Gen 8 because it's not Gen Ming. I can't remember what brand it is. If I do remember, I'll put it on the screen somewhere. It is a Gen 8 clone, so there are some minor differences. However, most of your Gen 8 aftermarket boxes and pieces should fit without too much trouble. Like I mentioned, you do have a plastic barrel as standard. So this thing, I'm expecting to do similar sort of performance to a Gen 8 M4A1, so around 180 FPS, that sort of thing. The only benefit being you have the giant box mag. So we'll see how that goes moving further along, but just a thing to be aware of. Like I mentioned about the trigger, be cautious on that because I could see that breaking quite easily. So other than that, the operations, four grip we've already gone through, you just loosen this and you can adjust it and place it as is or move it in place. Bipod, fairly straightforward, up and down. Absolutely nothing special there. Carry handle, I would not be trusting this. It's probably going to break very quickly because like I mentioned, it's flexing and it's not even got any weight in it at the moment. So there's only really two operations in this thing that you need to be aware of. So we'll get to that. First one that we're gonna do is the magazine. Now, obviously being a saw or a squad assault weapon designation, it needs to be able to put out a large amount of fire, consistent fire. So you do have this giant box mag. Now you might think that's a crap load of gels that's gonna last forever. Like the drum mags for all the previous blasters that have had them, you do not get this full capacity. In fact, you only get about probably that much up. So don't think you're gonna have this entire box to fill with gels. If you look inside there, it's gonna be a bit hard to see. Yeah, I can't really get the light to show you. It goes down like that and then hits the wall with a tube going out the middle and that's the feed tube. So it feeds the gels into the corner, goes back down through the motor and then up into and out of the feed tube. Now, obviously it is a motorized mag, so don't go tipping water in there as per usual. Make sure you clean your gels out after each use so it doesn't gum up or destroy the motor. However, what would also have been nice would be a mag prime. To my knowledge, I can't find one. So as far as I'm concerned, there isn't one. If there is one and I'm an idiot, then go ahead and point it out to me below and I'll fix up and put in an annotation somewhere. But yeah, so that's your magazine. Fairly straightforward. You can feed this while it's in because the feed door's just there. But to put the magazine in, on the bottom of the M249, as you can sort of see, uh, yep, we'll get it. There's two little holes just there along the bottom. See those lines? That's what these little uh, tabs insert into. Can only go in this way, so from the left hand side of the blaster into the right. If you try and go the other way, it won't work. Now, what you need to do is just push it in. On the back of the tab here, there's a little catch. Push it in like so. Give it a little tap. She's now locked in place. It's going good. Like I mentioned, you can open that there and refill the box without having to replace it. So unless you're running multiple boxes for whatever ungodly reason, you should never have to remove this during games, which is awesome. In order to remove the magazine, pretty straightforward. Like I mentioned, here's your mag release. Just there, that tiny little switch. You simply pull that back and then slide your magazine out. Now, what one of my uh, other guys who we play with has one of these as well. His mag catch and release has been very tricky to use. So be aware of that. Some of them may be a little bit dodgy. Uh, hopefully that's a one-off quality issue, but we'll see how that goes. This one seems to be fine. And by all other accounts I've heard, they're not that bad. So that's that. Now the next side obviously is the power source or the battery. Take your button clock off, pretty simple. Pull your little connection out, plug in your battery. Now take note, the battery I'm using is quite a large one. It's also a uh, much higher discharge rate. It's an 11.1 volt battery, not a 7.4. I'm not 100% sure what batteries come with the, tend to come with the standard. I would be willing to bet that they're gonna be 7.4s because they're just easy and cheap to, dish, to throw out. However, all the tests on this one today are gonna be with 11.1 volt batteries. So you're aware. Simply slide it in. Like I mentioned, if your battery fits inside an M4 buff tube, it'll fit inside this. That's it. Right, straight and simple. Lift up your catch, put your bucket stock back on like so, and then set it to your desired level. Now I like to run quite close, so I'm gonna run it there. Now, you're almost ready to go, except no, because like I mentioned, it's not obvious. There's a little switch just here. It needs to be pushed down, and now we are live and ready to fire. 
Sounds pretty good. So, overall, personally, I'm quite happy with it. Uh, it. For what it is, it's not bad, especially considering it is about the same price at the moment as a Gen 8 M4. So, it's not expensive because it's nothing all that flash. It's more just something different. And it uses Gen 8 internals, so there's going to be plenty of modification parts available out there. Not to mention the fact that you could probably pull this apart and do whatever you want to the design anyway. So, all in all, I'm fairly happy with it. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that mine will turn up this week at some point, but who knows? Because, you know, who doesn't like having the ability to never reload? That's always nice. So, what we'll do now, I'll uh, rearrange all this camera setup and whatnot, and we'll jump into the chrono test, the bit that everyone actually cares about. So, once again, as per usual, make sure you're wearing adequate eye protection whenever you're using your gel blasters, also indoors. Also keep in mind that for all these tests, as per usual, I am using hardened oranges. So the chrono test, the accuracy test that I'll do outside, and probably while I'm playing in the gameplay footage, it's all going to be hardened oranges, so be aware of that. I found that hardened oranges seem to go a bit better with the plastic barrels. So let's get into it. I'll just get it loaded. Alright, so we're now loaded, ready to go. Let's see how she goes. seem to be averaging anywhere between 197 up to 209. Uh, so I'll say an average of 200 and FPS, 200 to 205 FPS. That's actually pretty good, that's better than a standard Gen 8 M4. Uh, no idea if that's a gel selection issue or what the go is, but this one at least seems to be doing quite well. Rate of fire, we're getting anywhere between 20 to 28. Sounds about right, because it is firing fast, but it's not firing ridiculously fast. So I would consider that to be fairly accurate. All in all, a good little test. So, I'm not gonna bother repeating because we don't need to, let's face it, and I don't need to reload, which is nice. Unlike uh, P90s and MP7s, screw my life. Anyway, let's run outside into the sun. We'll do some accuracy testing, and we'll see how she goes. I'm actually hopeful on this one that it'll be quite good even at 20 meters, so see what happens. All right, as per usual, we'll start first with seven meters. I'm noticing that at this distance it's definitely variation. The variation and dispersion is far more left to right and such, so something to be aware of. As per usual, hop up's probably necessary at this sort of range. Oh, let's try 20 meters. Still not bad, making the distance without too much trouble. Making the distance without too much trouble, though sideways uh, and even up to down dispersion now is really an issue. Um, all things told though, still running pretty well, so can't complain. Let's get a bit closer, I'll refill this giant box mag, we'll see how long it takes to empty it. I am guessing it'll take a while. For science. Righto, let's go for the uh, box mag empty. It's gonna take a while.
That took forever. I need a drink. So just something I want to quickly highlight for you guys. I've just come back inside from that mag empty test, which took way too long, although I'm not really surprised at that. Something I want to note here, some of the older blasters have this. When you do long sustained bursts of fire, the motor tends to get quite warm. Now, I can feel the heat from that motor there. It's still not too bad, but just be aware of that. If you're going to keep doing that, reloading, and then doing it again and doing it again, you may end up damaging or burning out something there in the long term. So be very cautious of that. Not only that, but obviously if you're cycling for that long period of time, you have the current going through the wire. A lot of these blasters do not have very good solder connections. It's just the way they're built. that They're not that great, really, when you get down into it. So you may end up damaging some of your solder connections because it's constantly going through heat cycles and becoming brittle. So just be very aware of that. It's not too big a deal with this thing so far. I mean, this spent an entire day playing a week ago and it's doing this just fine. So I don't expect it to be an issue initially, but it will definitely come up over time. So just be very aware of that one. So ultimately the M249 Blaster is actually doing really well, all told, all things considered. It's also not all that expensive, so it is definitely seeming to be a favorite for a lot of people, including myself. So what we'll do now after looking at all that, we'll jump over into the gameplay footage. Now the gameplay footage is from our last weekend with the G3 guys, about a couple of days ago as of recording this voiceover. And we introduced a couple of new game modes in this, including a juggernaut method, which in the early bit of show footage, at about five minutes in, you would have seen me dual wielding the M249s. So you'll get to see a bit more of that, and also just normal gameplay with a single uh, blaster, just to see how it goes in the field. So I hope you guys enjoy that. And we'll get straight into it. Hit! Oh. Gotcha! Damn it! <laughs> Probably, Probably not them. No, well, I just got shot from that way. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I reacted before looking. Oh, they got help.
<laughs> Hi. <laughs> hey, Dan. I'm running out of ammo. This isn't meant to happen. <laughs> We gotta defend Jeff's hole. <laughs> it's Jeff's hole. Yeah, Logan's Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. Oh, Jeff, he's a Jeff's hole. <laughs> no. Nah. I defend that anyway. Jesus. Swapping arms. Oh, Kane's okay, trying to be sneaky. Yeah, it's kind of hard. We should really put like the survivors actually have a chance to win occasionally. Well, that's the thing, is it's meant to be a diminishing returns. If we had a timer and did it in like teams, you could see which team won. Because who lasted the longest. But Hi Dan! Doesn't help when you've got a lot of modded guns on one side. Oh he lived! Is he still shit? I'm really worried now someone's going to run around the edge. Is there someone down there? Yeah, there's someone walking down the edge. <laughs> Alright, I'll move down. Oh. Hi! <laughs> you mean a good, perfect placement. Oh, shot. That's one down far right. I'm gonna move right. Go man, go. So this one's a little bit different for you. Uh, what we decided to do was use two M249s and the armor panels that Lieutenant Dan bought. And we made a juggernaut who plays in the middle of the team deathmatch games that can be uh, tagged by either team and utilized. So hope you enjoy this one. Yeah, I'm out. I can't get him up here. I'm out. Okay. Huh? 
And I'm the Juggernaut. Woo! It. Juggernaut's down. Juggernaut's in. Bang, 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 bang. Bang. I was trying to not show you yeah. point blank range. <laughs> I mean, I can next time if you want. I was being nice. Hit, Juggernaut's down. Juggernaut's in. <laughs> oh, it's like he used it as a trap. Juggernaut is still down. Since I'm like right next to their base, I might make it so you can't tag me in. I'm out. I've already said it three times. It's all good. That's why my guns are up. So since I'm right next to your spawn, I can't, I can't be tagged by their team because I'm right next to your spawn. That'd be pretty fucked. Yeah, that'd be uh, pretty much. Of course, fuck it, dude. <laughs> Juggernaut's back. Oh, there's a stick there. You shot me a lot, but it just kept missing. I didn't actually yeah, I didn't hit. I know if you had a front plate, but didn't know whether to shoot or not. Yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed that gameplay footage. Managed to get both my gun cam and head cam working properly, so it was able to be a bit more interlaced. I hope you enjoyed it because it, it was definitely a lot more fun to edit and put together. Uh, also, the Juggernaut game foot. Uh, we all loved the playing is either with the Juggernaut in the game or in the case of myself and Lieutenant Dan, we both each took two turns playing as the Juggernaut and it was a lot of fun. It gets a bit confusing after a little bit, but and you get shot a lot, but that you just sort of deal with it. So it is a lot of fun. We're definitely hoping to play more of those. So with that being said, what I'll do now is I'll jump into section five and the th final thoughts on the M249 version three. Uh, honestly, I don't really have any negatives. The only negatives I have is the build quality is not the greatest. Uh, the body doesn't seem the strongest because it is fairly large uh, plastic molding. So it does have a bit of flex in it. That's about it, to be honest. Uh, like, yeah, like, out of the box, it's good. It does a consistent FPS. It has heaps of ammo capacity thanks to the box mag. It's relatively comfortable to run around with, and because it's light, it's also easy to run around with long term. Uh, upgrades, I would potentially do uh, myself. If, when I get mine, I'll probably do a couple of mine upgrades just for reliability and longevity. But that's about it. I'm not planning on making it ridiculous power or anything special like that. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll jump on over to the recommended accessories. Now, for this one, 
You don't really need a hop up. Uh, it would definitely help if you're trying to be a bit more accurate, but it's more of a suppressive weapon. So not having a hop up, as you would have seen in some of that gameplay footage, I was hitting people at long distance anyway, so it wasn't really too big a deal. This is more for keep, getting people to keep their heads down and not uh, move up or react to your presence. And it definitely does that very well. So hop up would definitely help be accurate of distance, but it's not required by any means. And I'm not going to recommend that you need a spare magazine because you really don't in this thing unless you're playing really long-term games. But I would recommend you have a speed loader present just so then when you do finish a game or need to reload on the off chance that you manage to empty that magazine before one game finishes, then you can just reload it as you go because you don't even need to take the magazine out to reload, which means it is really easy to just carry a bottle and just keep refilling it if you need to on the fly. So yeah, overall, it's good. I like it. It's not expensive, it's about, like I said, about the same cost as the Gen 8 M4A1 Jin Ming. So, really, you can't go wrong buying this thing, from what I can tell. Something I did note is, when I was using the two M249s, the one on the left is uh, another friend of mine. He got his around the same time as Lieutenant Dan, which is the one on the right, the one that I actually did all the reviews on. Uh, he was the one who had the magazine release clip, was a bit dicky and kept playing up on him. Uh, so that was his one. Not only that, but his on-off switch was opposite. So on Lieutenant Dan's, I believe the switch was down to be on. On Cody's, it was up to be on. So just watch out for that. There might be some disconnect there. But other than that, it was all good. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Also, uh, Happy New Year. Welcome to 2019 because I still definitely am planning on getting this up at the end of 2018 because why not? I don't uh, need a life at all. I can just live on the computer. And yeah, so smash that like button if you enjoyed the video. Comment down below if you've got any thoughts, questions, or queries. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel because it always helps out. And we're on our way to a thousand, hopefully. That would be awesome. And moving further forward, the ACR I do have with me. So I should be able to realistically get that review uh, at least started or finished and up in within a week or two. So that one is coming out soon. It is the HE ACR. Not the JM one, that's a bit more delayed yet. So yeah, all good. Don't forget to jump on Instagram and Facebook. I try and post up pictures as well every now and then just for a bit of fun and communicate anything going on. But other than that, I'll catch us next time.